First off this video, here is a summary of current sensors and there are different parameters for what I think is important to be when considering what type of current sensor you're going to use if you came to this video for just a quick overview. Here it is, please pause the video, take a screenshot and you can find out the different types of current sensors they are and a brief, and a brief indication of how effective they are and you can choose from there. Stick around for the rest of the video to find out a bit more into detail about three of them I have spoken about. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So here I am on a website, Pimaroni, and it's a, and here I've got a INA, INA169 analog DC current center breakout, 60 volts, 5A max. This is something I've used a lot in my own projects before, and I've had to do, it was a project for, I had to test multiple samples, and I multiplexed them all into the ADC of an Arduino to test the proof of concept thing to see if we can measure the resistance of these samples when the voltage is applied to them, and whatnot, and we use this to get accurate in ohms law. Do I know if it was the right way? There's probably still any other better ways to do it, but that's the point, besides the point of this video. Taking a look at this this is there are a few ways there are a few ways to measure current and it can either be indirect or directly in this case this is a direct method because it is literally passing through a shunt resistor where you need to bulge the wires and get thing in through it the you need to bulge the wires and pass a current through the shunt resistor here if you do not know these shunt resistors are current sense resistors otherwise and they drop a voltage across it and it usually picks it up through here and it probably takes a reading out of it and outputs it into your in the output as a millivolt and then your adc can read it so on and so forth and you're thinking okay so would i i can usually implement yes so could i implement this could i do the exact same thing in in, in my project yes you can you definitely can there's no harm in that you definitely can do that and we'll take a look at the data sheet let's find out let's find out what do you actually need here we are in the data sheet ina169 it's a high side unipolar current shunt monitor wide wide voltage range tiny so sot 23 package and use a variety of applications like i said before i've used this a lot in the past and it's brilliant absolutely brilliant just to get something quick and going easy easy to do so what are we looking for when we come to this as i said before these can be either indirect or direct so first what type of method do you want you know, something that's indirectly um might not be so invasive for your purpose or something that's direct you don't want you putting this in a circuit or something take a look we're going to be looking at a an, an indirect method a few methods really throughout this video so this is one method and you look through it you're looking for the operation you want to understand how this device works so you can implement it fairly straightforward the shunt goes across here there's a load power supply you slide and externally to it through here it can also be the same one it passes through a shunt resistor and comes out to your load it gives you some values of the voltage gain here of what you want to expect and with the resistor so it's very easy very easy to set up and get you going i would highly recommend you read this part of the data sheet it really really helps so i do highly recommend it over here usually in these data sheets they always give some sort of application and it's easy to get you going see it's really that simple it's nothing too complex about it again this is one of the more popular ones so if you just followed if you just followed what it says you can easily implement this and if you're really that lost refer to these modules they they're coming ready plug in easy to use use that for your proof of concept if that's what you're doing or just copy the layout design from this easy and these models are not expensive the chip will be even less so expensive don't worry about it so let's we look at a different method an indirect method for your project let's take a look at this zmc t103c current sensor module ac another popular another quite popular current sense module and this one i am a bit fond of with the project that i am going to do but for your case if you're looking for that innovative so even the project i plan to do is going to for this exact purpose you can already see that we have a donut shaped hole here and you can already think oh i guess i'll chuck the wire through it yes that is exactly how it does let's see how it works then shall we so how is this actually working i've got a brief diagram laid out here and as you can see the image is quite self-explanatory so this would work by first applying your wire through as for reference through the the donut shaped conductor and by passing through this wire it measures the change in the magnetic field because it's an ac signal and this would be act as your primary coil now this is a current transformer so if you know how the basic operation of a transform work the same principles apply you have a primary and secondary coil and so this coil over here the secondary one is essentially stepping it down from your primary isn't that smart and because i said before the change of a magnetic field we get step down output because of our secondary coil so we look at the data sheet of this 
device and this is actually just the the component itself the current transformer you may be wondering well what is that electronic component that was there i saw way more components than that well if you look over here you see the directions for use we actually see we have a op amp over here and it's because it is as you know an op amp is to amplify a signal and the current transformer you're getting a very minuscule signal it may not even be readable by our adc that of our choice this can be just plugged in straight into a microcontroller like so in this diagram that i'll put on screen and this op amp over here is just amplifying that to a readable like max 3v3 signal essentially so that's all that's all it is it is literally just this sensor and an op amp it's how a lot of similar things work with dealing with small signals it's it's quite surprising actually when you come round to it so let's take example for it. it's a completely off topic but it's like for example like emg a uh, muscle i don't know an electro muscle something i don't know i'm not too sure and um, so what it is it sticks on your muscle and then by flexing or contracting your muscle you get it generates a small uh, output voltage from that signal and the signal is just amplified and that's how you get a reading on to what is actually happening so you see a lot of these similarity albeit like with the more technical difficult stuff you see a lot more but this is just a basic concept of how it is so a, another popular method is this hall effect sensor here which we're looking at the data sheet it tells us tells us exactly what it is gives us a bit about its features description and nicely a typical application circuit which is always very useful and typically comes with these data sheets as per usual it is similar to any other ic do not treat this as always oh, like something special always comes in as like always time and time again they want to make it as easy as possible for them for you to integrate their stuff so you can come back and buy more let's take a little bit of a look at it and see what's there see what we can derive from this and from this we are going to take a look at how do we determine something is fit for our needs so i think the first thing is first is before it's range and everything supply voltage is it worth can we use this in our system so even just looking at the typical application says 3.3 or 5 volts and bypass with a 0.1 microfarad capacitor and this is pretty standard amongst the embedded system designs or whatnot you're usually working within these low voltage ranges so that seems to be good of course we can find this in our specification also here we are in the common operating characteristics 3 to 5.5 typical 5 volts but you can use 3.3 really supply current it is quite a bit so maybe keeping it in mind but i don't suppose you are constantly measuring this maybe every so often if you're doing some measurement unless you're having some feedback loop i don't know what you're doing but if you have a battery powered device maybe it is to worth keep in mind especially very port like portable ones and such so we've got that out the way what else are we looking for let's look at its offset to see if it's something that's really critical to us so this output voltage here we see it may drift over time as much as 25 millivolts but i don't think that is that much in our case so we're going to keep looking we see different types of things so i'm guessing this is the model so we have different things here 105 150 i'm guessing it's the different models that they provide and whatever model you choose has these but maybe we take this 150 one over here electrical offset voltage this is the drift is referred to ideal v out equals 2.5 volts and we can see at certain parameters and test conditions that we can get a if you're working between the 25 degree ambient temperature 25 to 125 maybe we get a 14 millivolt offset and minus 4 to 25 we get a 24 millivolt offset so that is keep in mind how accurate you want your system to be if it's just basic rough measurements i don't think it really matters that much but of course this is all dependent on your project so things to keep in mind so before that even we're wondering well the range what what can we even range like what what can we even measure so looking at this i'm assuming the primary sampled current is what we can actually measure we see 0 to 100 minus 100 to 100 so 0 to 50 is quite a bit it seems like can do ac and dc so this is quite a quite a bit actually we could probably use it with mains and now we are looking for its voltage which i assume would be just as equal as as much and fully capable so it's not really clear with these if you especially don't really know what you're looking for but here we find in the isolation characteristics that we can see the working voltage for basic isolation and dielectric test strength so these are just the standard tests that they go through and we see we get a 700 v rms 990 vdc or v peak vpk even on a quick google search you may be able to find something if you are not too certain and it's so it's not that confusing so quick google search you see someone else has done it, it says magnetic interface that automatically is isolated with rated for voltages up to 700 v rms so as you can see here it's quite a bit that it can really take and of course there are other parameters that you may be interested but i think these will be the main one the supply voltage what its current measurement and voltage measurement the drift or its offset if you will see what else you might 
need. And anything else, I think, quick Google or whatnot. But, but this is just to get you started, what measurement techniques are available to you when you are exploring this topic. Now, before we end off the video, I'd like to show you a bit of a, a summary sheet. Really. So I have a bit of a summary table here for your reference, really, if you ever wanted to see. And in this table, I'll briefly go over with you. So here are five methods of measuring current. There are shunt, hall effect, current transformer, Rogowski, forgive me, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, zero flex. We have the connection type, the current, accuracy, range, drift, and isolation. Now, the isolation one is when we saw the, the VRMS value, and it's isolated because inside that IC there was actually a Hall effect sender, so it's not actually passing through, it's instead sensing it. So that is why, and as you can tell with the isolation, you can see for the current transformer is passing through something, it's not directly connected. And But for the shunt one, you saw we had to pass it through something, and that's why it's there's no isolation in between, so that's something else you need to keep in mind. But between choosing something for your projects, I would keep these few parameters in mind to see what you are measuring and I hope this table comes in helpful so please pause the video take and take some notes if you really have to take a screenshot and hopefully this helps you in this part of what you think and what need what you need for your projects <laughs>